We are joined now by Amanda Biasi Gott. She is a candidate for the First Judicial Circuit. And Amanda, welcome. And let our viewers know who is Amanda Biasi Gott. Absolutely. Well, thank you for having me, Kevin. Uh, my name is Amanda Biasi Gott, and I'm currently a candidate for at large circuit judge uh, here in the First Circuit that's comprised of nine counties Jackson, Williamson, Saline, Union, Johnson, Pope, Pulaski, Alexander, and Massac counties. I was born and raised in Marion, Illinois, uh, to Jim and Linda Biasi that owned Biasi Keyboard okay. uh, forever, as well as Dreams Do Come True. And I'm currently married to my husband, Ashley Gott, raised our three boys here in Marion um, that are all teenagers now. And uh, I'm an attorney in private practice, owning my own law firm uh, here in Marion, Illinois. But I practice throughout all nine counties of the circuit in which I'm running. And it's also my 12th year as a family law mediator. And so I do that as well as part of my practice. Okay. And tell me why you want to be judge. Well, being a part of the legal profession is something that I've wanted to do for as long as I can remember, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, and so I've been able to fulfill that goal by being an attorney for the last 19 years. And now I have the opportunity to serve Southern Illinois in a different capacity on the other side of the bench. And I think make a, even more of an impact uh, for the citizens of Southern Illinois. Um, so I'm excited to uh, be running for a judge, to become your next circuit judge. And I also think that it's very important um, to bring some diversity to the bench. We have in the First Circuit 21 judicial positions, and only two of those positions are women. Oh, okay. And so in, in choosing to run for judge, I knew that that was something that I could bring to the circuit in this area is I would be the only the third female judge in Southern Illinois. So still underrepresented, um, but I think it's very important for the citizens here in Southern Illinois to see that diversity um, and for the fairness of the, of the, of the bench to mm -hmm. see that many of us, you know, to look more like the citizens of Southern Illinois. So uh, how do you feel you meet the specific requirements to be judge? Well, this is one of the unique elected positions in which you do have to have uh, a degree. Mm -hmm. You do have to be an attorney. And so I'm a proud graduate of SIU Law School in 1999. I actually started practicing with my student license even before I graduated, working at the Williamson County State's Attorney's Office in an externship and then also working for Land of Lincoln Legal Assistance. Um, and then I began my actual legal career uh, once I got my license and have practiced throughout the first, second, fourth, and 20th circuits trying cases and all of those circuits all across Southern Illinois. I've had the opportunity to appear in front of the federal bankruptcy court uh, on credit or right at use several times. I also have appeared before administrative tribunals such as the Social Security Administration Illinois DCFS and Child Support Administrative Hearings. And I've argued before the appellate court, I think about nine times at this okay. point. Um, coupled with that, I also have uh, been certified in mediation and have been a family law mediator for over 12 years. I'm certified in both the first and the second circuit to serve as a mediator, as well as a guardian ad litem, which is an attorney uh, who is court appointed to represent minors and disabled adults. Okay. Very good. And so integrity and ethical conduct are obviously key parts to this position. So how do you hold yourself accountable? Well, I'm a Christian and I was raised in a, in a family of faith with a very good moral compass. Mm -hmm. So personally, those are my highest standards that I adhere to. As professionally, as an attorney and as a judge, certainly, I will follow the ethical standards um, of our profession. I hold those in very high esteem. Um, and work very hard to make sure that those are complied with. I think those of us in the legal profession um, take it very seriously um, and try to maintain ourselves um, with the highest ethical standards that we can. I also am very proud to serve on the 5th District Character and Fitness Committee yeah. um, as appointed by the Supreme Court. That's a committee where we interview law applicants that want to obtain their Illinois law license. And we're determining whether or not they have the character and fitness, the integrity um, to serve and be a lawyer in Illinois. So I'm honored to have been chosen for that position. I take it very seriously, just as I will take very seriously the judicial oath of office. And what specific issues do you think there are that are confronting judges here in Southern Illinois and specifically in the first judicial circuit? 
certainly the two of the most uh, recent issues that the circuit courts are dealing with, one of which is equal access to justice, mm -hmm. and the other I would say is specialty courts. Um, so with regard to equal access to justice, um, it's an initiative and a law about making sure that all of the citizens in Southern Illinois and throughout the state have the fair opportunity to be heard in court. Now here in Southern Illinois, we have a very large population of indigent people, people mm -hmm. who can't afford an attorney, who can't afford to pay their fees in cases. Um, and so that issue has really been worked on by the circuit courts in terms of trying to make sure that those people have the fair opportunity to proceed in court, to understand the process, um, that they have the opportunity to have forms, computers available to them, um, because we now have gone to electronic filing. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a computer, how are you going to file your case? So the courts have worked very hard on that issue. Um, the second issue, as I mentioned, is specialty courts. Mm -hmm. That's what people have heard in terms of veterans and drug courts, as well as the opportunity to have a mental health court. That issue is currently being worked on by our circuit right now and going through the certification process for the drug and veterans courts. It's a wonderful program um, and when I become circuit judge I certainly will be glad to work on that and continue referring people that meet the guidelines to that program. All right. Well, as a judge, you will deal with criminal and civil issues. So how has your background and legal experience prepared you for the job? Well, I have, I think, a unique a legal background, probably that qualifies me more than many other candidates. Um, because of the nature of where I've worked over the, my 19 years, um, I began working, um, I externed at the state's attorney's office as a law student. I then began working for Land of Lincoln Legal Assistance, mm -hmm. um, working at representing victims of domestic violence. Um, doing orders of protection and family law cases. Then I went to a private firm where I handled criminal defense work as well as personal injury cases and other general practice areas. Um, then I opened my own office uh, and I've practiced in a variety of different areas of law. Many people don't understand that the court system is comprised of several different areas of law. We call them several different dockets mm -hmm. and a judge may sit on any or all of those dockets depending on what their position is. And so I think it's important that you have uh, a judge elected who is someone who has experience in at least a fair majority of those issues. For example, here in Williamson County, one and a half judges handle criminal and traffic issues. Three and a half judges are handling all of the civil cases that come before the courts. Mm. All righty. Well, can you provide an example of how judges act and rule impartially? You know, I see it every day in my practice. Um, having practiced throughout Southern Illinois, throughout my career, I've had the opportunity to try cases in front of many different judges in many different counties. I can't say that I have ever had an experience where I felt like a judge really made a ruling in a case because of a bias or a prejudice in favor of one party. Now, I may not have agreed with their decision. Mm -hmm. I may have thought the law was more on my side than the other side. Um, but certainly, I always thought that the court had listened to both parties um, and had made the decision that they felt was appropriate under the circumstances. Um, that's the example that we all should follow. Mm -hmm. And I've had some wonderful role models as judges throughout the years in this circuit as well as other circuits that I would plan to follow as a guideline. I think the most important thing that any person wants to know is that when they come before the courts, they're going to have the fair opportunity to be heard and listen to, and then the court's going to apply the law to that circumstance. What role does a circuit judge play when it comes to controlling costs, especially in smaller counties where operating budgets are very tight right now? Absolutely. Um, as I mentioned, we do have a rural area here in this first circuit. Um, there are a lot of, on the civil side, uh, requests for fee waivers, mm -hmm. meaning that um, the, the party in the case would not have to pay filing fees. But that also extends, perhaps, to is the court going to decide that they need an expert paid for, or a guardian ad litem paid for, or newspaper publication costs that are going to come at the cost of the county. Mm -hmm. You have to balance those expenses with the right for those people to have the opportunity to proceed in court. And with regard to the criminal system, you certainly have a lot of requests here for the public defender. And so the court has to determine the factors, whether or not they meet the standards, and whether or not they qualify to have a public defender. And if they do, then you also may have circumstances where you're asked, as a judge, to 
say whether or not the county is going to have to pay for an expert witness mm -hmm. or some type of other special testing. And so that's where as a circuit judge, I think you do have some kind of influence to try to control the costs to the litigants um, that are in the case, but also to your county. And kind of a similar question, how, how does economics affect the judicial system, do you think? Well, the, the way that we elect judges uh, means it is a political process mm -hmm. with political party affiliated. Unfortunately, that means that sometimes economics plays a role. It shouldn't. Mm -hmm. um, I, I certainly encourage all the citizens in Southern Illinois and all the voters to look at the qualifications of all the candidates, look at their experience, and decide who you believe would be best for that role. But I'm in a race in which my opponent has received money from D.C. trial lawyers, uh, PACs from Kansas and Washington, D.C. What place does that have in our role in electing a Southern Illinois judge? It shouldn't have any role. Talk to me more about politics because this is obviously an elected seat. Uh, how do you keep politics out of the system or when you're trying to you know, be impartial on the bench, as you said? Well, I think one thing that does make people confident in the system is that once you're elected a judge, you can't be political, mm -hmm. okay? While we're running, certainly we're dealing with the process and mm -hmm. the way that it's created is that we're running in a, in a partisan election. So we have to work within the bounds of that system. But we do have an ethical code that we have to follow that allows us, for instance, to say, we're not running on a platform, we can't run on a platform, and we're not supposed to be answering questions about how we would rule in a particular case mm -hmm. or issue that might come before us. So I think that helps to safeguard the fact um, that we are to be impartial, we should not be prejudging any cases. Um, I certainly have been supportive of judicial candidates on both sides um, politically. Um, and I would hope that the citizens of Southern Illinois would really take the opportunity to look at the qualifications and choose someone who is going to be uh, fair and impartial and not be influenced by special interests. Talk to me about temperament and what kind of personality you would bring to the bench. Well, I think we have a different um, there are different things between temperament and personality. Mm -hmm. So you hear a lot with judicial positions, um, judicial temperament. I think that's different than your personality. Um, so a, a judicial temperament is the ability to um, listen to a case fairly, to have compassion, to be able to listen fairly and openly um, to the evidence uh, without regard to bias, without regard to who's appearing in front of you. And so I certainly think that I meet those qualifications. Um, I have the experience for the position and, and having had my own practice for so long, I've had the opportunity to represent the indigent, to represent the wealthy, to represent people from all sorts of uh, races, religions, sexual preferences. Um, and so that gives me a good background to be able to be fair and, and impartial and free from bias on the bench. And what is your view on cameras in the courtroom during trial juries? You know, we live in a technological age. Um, and so I think that the current law as it is, um, is very fair and it does allow for there to be cameras in the courtroom under certain circumstances. I would actually be in favor of having cameras in the courtroom. I think that it's important for um, citizens to recognize that the judiciary is a fair and open process. I think the more that you see of that process um, allows people to realize you're not hiding anything and this is how the system works. There are certain cases that where um, the information is sealed, where it's not appropriate and, and concerning children or financial matters of parties um, to have cameras in the courtroom. But I certainly think for purposes of jury trials, be they civil or criminal, that um, I think we're getting to the point where we're probably gonna have cameras in the courtroom on a regular basis. And I think as a judiciary, we don't have anything to hide mm -hmm. about the legal system. I would just say I think it would be wonderful if the correspondents and people working on those issues are really trained so that they can explain to the public legally what's going on in the case. Mm -hmm. Last question, it's about the Judiciary Advisory Poll. This is a poll uh, of, of different members of the uh, ISBA uh, rating different candidates that are running. Uh, now they either give you a recommended or not recommended and, and you were given not recommended. What is your reaction or thoughts on this poll? Um, you know, the ISBA bar poll is to me a, a non-factor in this mm -hmm. election. 
Unfortunately, in the 5th District particularly, it has been proven to be highly partisan and politically motivated, uh, where Democrats generally almost always rank higher than Republicans. It also lends itself to um, those that have come from larger firms or have statewide connections, as opposed to someone like me who's been a solo practitioner representing the people of Southern Illinois mm -hmm. day in and day out on sort of your regular everyday types of cases. Um, so I have, um, it's also one of the most misquoted and misunderstood bar polls, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, we have over 430 active and non-active attorneys in the First Circuit. I believe only 126 people submitted a ballot. Okay. And of those in this election, um, you actually don't know where any of those ballots came from. Gotcha. Uh, and so I don't believe it's reflective of the reputation that I have amongst our bar. I have a very thriving law practice. I receive referrals and court appointments on a regular basis um, from my colleagues and from the judges sitting on this court, many of whom encouraged me to run for this mm -hmm. position because of my experience. So I feel confident that uh, the voters of Southern Illinois are actually going to look at the qualifications and experience of the candidates and not a bar poll. Mm -hmm. All right, well, thank you so much for joining us today. Amanda Biasi-Gott uh, running again for the First Judicial Circuit. Appreciate you coming in. Thank you, Kevin.